Hi everyone, this is Aki with a um, different type of video, YouTube video. Um, basically, this is a video with tips and tricks that I've learned over the past two months or so when I started recording videos and putting it on YouTube. So I have two channels and um, I'll go over them in a second. But basically, I wanted to do this video because I feel like there's a lot of videos by very successful YouTubers, you know, about the mistakes they've made, what they would have changed and so on. But I don't think that's much um, about people who just starting, like sharing their journey and sharing their tips and what I have learned kind of at the beginning of the process versus someone who's very advanced, uh, who's been very successful. I thought it'd be kind of a good idea to kind of share with people who are kind of starting like myself and maybe we can, you know, support each other, share with each other like tips and tricks um, at this stage of the process. So I'm kind of like two months in. Please feel free to share um, how long ago you've started. You know, what are your tips and tricks? And um, hopefully maybe like in two more months or, or more, I will do another video and kind of want to I'm curious to see, you know, what I've learned, how I improved and so on. So I, you know, I started about two months ago. And I have two channels mainly. So I have this design channel that, you know, I go over different tools and like web design, I have self-publishing and different tools. And then I also have another channel that I do go over tax information. I'm an enrolled agent. So um, I specialize in tax preparation and I've, you know, worked for some companies as tax experts and so on. And I volunteered for um, Vida and TCE programs with um, programs that are sponsored by IRS. So, um, you know, and I always wanted to design and do things about taxes that are clear, um, not confusing, that really um, are in simple language. And I wanted to make them also pretty, like visually appealing, um, clear, um, not just full of tax. And so, so this is kind of like why I have these two different interests and channels. And I also dibble and double in different things. I have some notes for myself, so I'm going to be looking left because I have some notes that I want to just go over kind of the tips and things that I can share with you. So maybe let's start with audio. So how, you know, how did I approach this? What I think about all of this? So I, you know, at first I was kind of like nervous doing this. I'm first of all, like, let's address the elephant in the room. Like I have an accent, so I was thinking, okay, you know, I was kind of a little bit insecure about that and thinking um, how do the viewers will feel. And I, I was just thinking that you, you want to be clear. So make sure you know clear how you explain things. And I wanted to slow myself down because that's my main thing, like in my real life with friends or, or and, and so on, with family and friends, I speak fast. So I had to like slow myself down. So I think that would be one advice I would have with uh, for others. Slow yourself down. It's always easier to speed up a video versus to slow it um, to slow it down. Like whenever you try to slow things down, like videos, the, the voice just get distorted versus like if you speed it up, you can still understand if it's a it was a slow um, speaking audio so that's what i have been trying to do and i feel like also like youtube is like a great great platform that they're just so international there's so many uh people from all over the world sharing their knowledge you know content information and teaching people different things and so it's like you know you either regret it not doing it or trying so i would rather regret you know trying and not working out than not trying so that's what i feel like you should just go for it if you have something you want to share with the world. And I will go over some of the goals maybe that you have for the channel versus others. And there might be different ways how you should approach it depending on your goals. Now, Mike, I used to use um, um, Blue Jedi. So I used to have this mic right here. But um, I had my old computer and what was happening, I had such issues with the audio being distorted because my fans on my MacBook Pro 2015 were so loud that basically the audio was unusable. And I mean, the mic helped a little bit, but it didn't solve the problem. So at first, what I was doing is actually I downloaded this application. It's called Mac Fan Control. Uh, it's this and um, 
I really liked it because you could change the Mac, um, the fan, the rate of speed, how how you know how fast they were rotating to kind of slow them down so they were not so loud. And I really liked this application. However, my Mac was still like kind of old. So what was happening? My fans would slow down, but everything else became glitchy. And like whenever I clicked on things and I tried to move to a different screen, it was just it was just not workable. So I actually got a new computer in the past year. So that really helps. So my videos are not like rushed because I felt like rushed. I had to like five minutes really to record something. And, you know, and then I had to re-record it and I was stressing and I was like making mistakes because I knew that it's going to become loud in a second. So, you know, that really helped for me. Um, now I actually just use the mic from my new computer. So it, it has been really great. I have been like pleasantly surprised that it's working so well. Now, also the turning of the fans, there was also like a temporary solution. There was not really good solution for longer videos, like, you know, for my, um, for my tags videos, like they're really long. Some of them like, you know, can be 45 minutes, half an hour. So it really was not realistic. That's why I was kind of behind on posting some of this stuff because I mean, anyway, I was just working on so many things, but also because I just couldn't record them because they, it was just not possible. Now, um, now, also another thing I want to show, uh, tell you about, like when I started working and then I tried to transcribe my videos and do the closed caption because I tried to do closed caption to make them accessible for all kinds of people and people. Sometimes I know like maybe you can't listen to it. You want to re read what someone's, uh, you know, you're doing other things or maybe in a place where you <clears throat> you can't listen to things or maybe, you know, um, you can't hear very well, what have you. So there are different reasons. So I want to make them, uh, you know, accessible as, uh, as much as possible. So YouTube has the uh, closed caption option once you upload it. And I'll do a video on how you upload things to YouTube and so on. But it was just really like not understanding me clearly. So I actually used another um, program. It's called order.ai and I'll I'll put it in the notes and you can import the audio once you record it here and it transcribes for you. It's a little better. They do have a free version and then do have also paid version if you're importing a lot of uh, recordings. So I'm importing a lot. If you're just recording, um, that's just transcription, the plan. I think it's free. I'm not going to try to find it right now. But um, so that's another option. There's also a bunch of uh, free ones out there so you can just google and search for some of them now i also use the grammarly so whenever i would get the transcribed text i would go over quickly and just at first i was spending so much time like just reading and making sure it matches everything i'm saying but now i just do it pretty quickly because you were just taking too much time and i don't want to like my main thing is like i don't want to spend too much time editing everything so i can give a suggestion try to set up everything as perfect as you can at the beginning uh, and i'll go over some of the stuff to look um look at versus trying to edit it because i'm not like experiencing it yet so it would take me too much time and then you know I, I, my goal also is not to make cool videos i just want them to make it clear um helpful um informative um now another thing you know I, wanted to mention is also like stiffness like I feel like you know like sometimes I feel like I'm a little bit too stiff on the videos but I think it maybe will come with time you know doing them a lot of them like you know I have a sense of humor and I would want to have it more like my personality show up in that but unfortunately I guess you know the type of videos I'm doing maybe maybe over time it will be but right now you know that's something I'm working on now let's let's talk about visuals so the camera that i'm using i'm not i don't have any other fancy v v um, camera i wanted to purchase ones like on amazon i saw a bunch and i asked other people what they were using something hundred dollars or so but i haven't purchased and i'm actually using my computer video and i've i've been pretty okay with that now i've used camtasia so i used camtasia software at first to try to like you know uh, record my uh, recordings and basically put it all together and so however you know because I had the issue with my computer um, it was really slow and it was like 
very, it's a very, very big program. So I actually did purchase uh, ScreenFlow and that's what I'm using right now. And I actually found it that personally, I like it better in a way because it's simpler. So for me, when I'm just a beginning, I don't need to have like all these transition effects and all that stuff. I just want to have it simple enough to kind of communicate what I want to communicate and help people answer their questions. Um, so, and provide information. So, so for me, maybe eventually I noticed that like in my process, once I learn something, it's easy for me to incorporate it in next videos, but at the beginning, it's just always like a learning process. So you have to kind of learn. So ScreenFlow, I liked using, and another thing I can show you, you don't have to purchase like special recording software. Actually, if you have a Mac, um, screenshot that actually has an option here um, to record a video, record entire screen, and you can record an entire screen. And I actually used it for just to test it out, and um, it's pretty good. So if you don't want to necessarily like put an icon of yourself or record yourself, you know, have a face camera on, then it's this is perfect. So you don't have to like just if you're just trying just just use that at first and i've had some videos you know with you know myself like like visually there in video like a, you know i'm there as well but i have also just with audio and um i'm just still thinking like what i want and on my videos i i don't feel so comfortable like making it huge uh, maybe one day i will but right now i just like to have a, like a small icon on myself like you know in the bottom and so on. Oh, okay. Maybe let's, let's, let's address this one. So <sighs> clothing. So <laughs> for most of my videos, like I try to just be very simple, just have a couple of the same outfits. I just have like a couple of sweaters that I use and I just use them. They're just simple enough, not distracting. And I don't have to think about it too much. It's not too much going on, but I had like, look at this sweater here. And, um, and I had this white sweater, but then when I removed the background and that's what you can do in the screen flow. And I like screen flow for that reason. Like, it just looks like my head is cut out. So then I knew from then on that I'm like, okay, I cannot be wearing that when I'm recording with a white background, because I was, I was doing like a video on pages and everything is white in the background. Then my sweater was like white, like light gray. So then that didn't come out right. So. It's good to, you know, for example, when you start recording, maybe do like a test, set up everything how you like, and then just do a test, maybe like, a, you know, two minutes, kind of see how everything looks. Maybe there's something wrong. Maybe you have a hair sticking out or, or whatever, like one video I did, and I have this kind of uh, um, navy turtleneck, and I was just petting my cat. So I have like a bunch of hair on me. And it's like, I'm not going to go try to edit this. And it's just like, I'm like, you know, it is what it is, but it's just like, I went through half an hour video basically with that. So, so take the time to maybe test uh, yourself. And I try to do that now a little bit more. So, um, another thing I want to mention, like how you position your camera. So like sometimes I would record and I had my like, you know, video, like, like right there or too low. So I try to like find the perfect place. So now I'm, with ScreenFlow, what I can do actually, okay. So now you see like here with ScreenFlow, I have this like option to see how I, how I look so I can check myself. And, um, once like I put that in and I just left it and I thought it will not record, but actually record it. So you can put it on another monitor, but it gives you an idea to kind of position when you are, how you look, but I can move it to another monitor so I can have an idea from time to time I can peek. But you want to like, you know, for example, maybe if it's too low, the computer, you can put a book underneath to kind of like make it higher. Now, another thing is like, because I try to remove my um, background just to not make it distracting. And I kind of like just having that, that icon of myself in a lower corner. I noticed I was using this chair with like very bad high back. So right now I'm using like very s stiff chair, but actually I feel like my posture is better. So I'm not like leaning like this or anything like that. So I'll show you the chair that I used to uh, use. And what was happening when I was, I was trying to remove the background, you could see the chair from time to time coming in and out. So I'll show you in a second. Let me just pause it for a second. Okay. So you can see I have my 
big chair who's, that's very comfortable. However, you know, I would make myself like, move too much in this chair and then when I was trying to remove the background the chair would come in back and forth and I just didn't like how that was um, ha happening so now I just like when I record I move to the other chair so let me change my chair right now okay I'm back I just changed my chair okay so now I also like you know just kind of have like a shoulder up kind of view of myself now you want to make sure you don't have a busy background in the back so um, you know, like I try to kind of position this computer a little bit on my wall that's empty so it's not too distracting. Like if you have too much stuff going on, I know whenever I'm watching videos, if there's so much stuff in the background, I like to look what's going on there. So I try to avoid that. Okay, now I, um, for all my thumbnails, so I use Canva. So, uh, I mean, it's a great tool and you there's free version before you go to pro. So... Um, I actually create all my thumbnails there so then I can just, you know, don't start from, uh, from over, but basically I can just copy and then replace some stuff and, um, and, and so on. And also like want to let you know that for, at first, you know, it was very different, but what happened is like, um, I went through my YouTube channel and I was just looking how, how they look like the thumbnails, how they look compared to other so for example like you know like at first like like right now when i'm looking at the thumbnails i'm like okay i can see what they're about but okay so now you can see that i searched for my one of my videos and now i can actually see it and i see that it pops but before it was like you know it was kind of weak it was kind of like this one like it was just not it didn't pop you couldn't really uh, make it as clickable as as it's now because you can really see it like what it's about and it just feels like the color and the contrast pops so don't worry about it if it's not perfect first because what happened in youtube you can replace your thumbnails so just just create something and then you can go back to optimize it for seo for search and so on and um you know it, it doesn't have to be perfect just go with what you have it doesn't have to be you can always change it <clears throat> now also when i use um canva i also use these and I create this little intro video so you see like this this I export this and basically I put this as the intro of my videos and you know if I change my thumbnail but the intro video is different especially after upload so what that's okay you know <laughs> doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to be exact you don't have to go back and redo everything just a little bit to um, to have people you know find it and go in sometimes maybe you want to do recording like you might you know i don't know what works for you depending on what videos you're doing but for me like actually for example these past like it was like five videos in a row that i posted i actually recorded them at the same time and i just i spent one day to just basically record them and just save them and then over the next week i would just go in and edit one at a time and post that so then it was just more efficient for me than just like record, edit, post, and then go start again. Because for recording, I feel like, you know, I have to have quiet um, and so on. I want to make sure that, you know, there's no other distractions, interruptions. So sometimes you might actually have a bigger chunk of time that you can do a few of them and then just um, post them as you have time and edit them as you have time let's talk about some of these statistics so when you have this likes versus dislikes so at first like i was looking at this you know and i um had one of my videos like i received some dislike and i was like why you know but it could be for different reason it could be you know audio people didn't find the answer to their question or, or for whatever reason and also i was reading about the algorithm and how some of the dislike can affect your channel and some of it could be beneficial in a sense that you those people who disliked your content they might not have it next time show up as likely or as high in the search so actually it's a beneficial thing for you like you don't want people who don't like your stuff to keep getting it and disliking your videos so um don't worry about it just keep going with what you're doing um as long as it's helpful for some viewers solving some problem then um you're good to go and there'll be always someone who you know who will not find it useful because maybe 
what they searched for, they didn't put in the right keyword, what actually, you know, um, showed up in the results. So um, it could be different reasons. I'm trying to repurpose some of the stuff. And so, for example, another thing I want to show you, like how you can report, repurpose the stuff that you post on videos. Obviously, you can put a post on social media, but I also have two um, websites. So I have one tax geared website as well as a design website. And so I have each of them have a video section, video page, and I put on that page, you know, um, all my videos, um, kind of a list of the videos that I've done to kind of like have a different way of getting to the videos. Oh, for some reason, my computer, my internet is slow. So I'm actually using a hotspot. That's why it's so slow. Um, so I have them, you know, in those two places and, you know, eventually I'll try to maybe see how else I can incorporate it. And I also have articles and then I have, you know, links in the articles to some of the videos that I've made. You see, this is my design one. Um, another thing I want to talk about. Oh, I know I didn't talk about light. So right now you probably see the lights above because actually it's very dark day. It's rainy. It's very gray outside. But I try to record when it's light outside and I actually use just uh, I have big windows right in front of me. So I use the, the window, the light from outside. Um, I did consider try to um, consider buying like these light things that you can attach, but I don't want to spend too much money and time right now on designing my huge studio when I'm just starting out and I feel like with time when I need something kind of like what would happen with, you know, with the audio and so on, I had to find a solution because it was really um, preventing me from creating great content. So once that happens, like if I see that the videos are horrible, then I'll have to like figure out, okay, what I can do to fix it. Now I do like with screen flow, that's what another thing why I like using it is they do have filters so you can like improve the video a little bit. So it doesn't look like it's a home video. So I like doing it. I don't like to do it too much so it doesn't look like too extreme but it does help you know make the video look more professional i feel um and i do also like to remove the background and you can make the background blurry as well so there are other options out there interruptions oh that's my number one interruption for me is uh my cat <laughs> so now he, he's sleeping but i have two cats and one is just special especially he just has these times where he finds he wants to talk to me and he wants to be pet. So he comes over and many times, you know, was interrupted with that or sometimes he's just making noise uh, running around. So that's my number one. Then I also have, you know, if you have family, kids at home. So that's another one that can be, you know, um, that can happen. Or maybe I had once a landscaping being done for like three hours outside. And then I thought maybe the audio would still be good, but it was just so hard to really remove that noise. And I just was not going to spend the time. So I actually had to re-record it. So it's better if you just start without all these things, unless you're into like editing, um, then just start with everything kind of the best way you can at first versus like trying to edit this out later on. Uh, and then also like when I'm timing myself if I make a mistake now in screen flow there's an option here that you can click and click add marker or pause and so what I do that that basically kind of marks it for me to later on make sure that okay maybe cut out the section or there was a you know a mistake that I have to fix or so on so I've been trying to use that more and like also when I'm speaking and I make a mistake to try to stop and then say, okay, and when I'm speaking, try to like repeat what I just said to kind of, um, so I don't have to go back later on and re-record something because I'm, I don't like doing that. I don't like to spend time doing that. Now, um, organization. So I feel like with just doing all these videos, like I've noticed that, so you kind of set up some processes and once you do a few of these videos, you will create a process and you will try to make it more efficient and fast and it will be easier and faster. So what I do, I actually have a tracker like in my Excel. Okay, where's my tracker? Right here. So I actually keep track of all my videos 
uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I like to have like, you know, description, how many, my goal was basically to do 100 and some, I'm very close, I'm, like, I'm at 58 right now. And then I also have what website I posted as well and for which account and then category because I'm doing different things. Um, I have like, you know, draft when I created the video and when I post it. And you can notice at the very beginning, I actually have like 229 days before the draft and when I post it because I started like I was thinking about this like a year before even more and I started trying different things but I just was not ready and I feel like you know you do want to post them you know don't wait too long but at the same time I was just not ready like with some of the tools I had with some of the stuff that I wanted to discuss and do and I was just not ready with some of the other things that I was doing I was writing a book at the same time so I you know I decided to just wait but now like the days that are between draft and final like you know are few so I try to do um you know not too many days in between but sometimes life gets busy so it's okay you know as long as you're consistent and then you know I I just keep the amount of time some of the videos are I'm not sure why yet but maybe later I want to see like how many viewers are for different videos and see if the short ones uh, get more views versus the long ones and so on. And then I also have a link here. And the link, the reason why I do is because I repost them on, you know, I did a little bit on some social media, but I also repost them on my website. And I don't want to have to go to the channel, find the video, find the link and, and post it and put the code in. So now I just have the link here. So for any purposes, I can just copy it easily and post it somewhere else. So so that's my um excel track okay so this is my uh the way i organize the files so i also have you know uh, my folder and then i have them you know design and i add the color basically to specify the ones that i've done already posted and then i have some blue ones that are what i've searched for certain keywords and i'm like okay i want to do the video about this I don't have time, but I just create a folder or I put that keyword in my keyword um, tab on my Excel sheet. And then, you know, so I remember to do something about it. Then I also have these like blue icons and this like little color uh, coded circle there to kind of say, I have a draft, but I haven't really gone through the editing process and like posting it. So kind of like to, to remind me that, hey, look, I have actually like about, you know, 10 drafts there that some might not be usable, I might have to re-record, but some, if maybe I have time to to post it, or maybe I want to do some other tools in between so it doesn't look too many of the same tool for a video. So, you know, like I told you before, like I did a couple of the, uh, like couple of the videos at the same time. So some of it's about the same tool, different videos. So that way I just save the drafts there for uh, whenever I'm ready. Um, oh, I know what I want to talk about some thumbnails that I didn't address here. So I want to show you like before I decided on the type of thumbnails I have. So like you see, you have text and just a little icon. So I was looking at um, a few other ones. Like I was looking at, for example, Pat Flynn. I, I like him and I follow him. Like he has like usually a, a visual of himself and then the, um, the text and and something funny or smiling and so on. And I'm like, okay, so this is like something that I could do something like that. Another one, like I follow um, Daryl Wilson and he, um, he just has the kind of the same visual icon um, on most of his videos. And I'm like, that's kind of like me. I, I don't want to spend too much time putting different images on different videos and stuff. I mean, you know, it depends on your budget and time and you have to do what's best for you, like what's going to be minimum amount of work. If you feel like something is so hard, like you don't want to do it, try to find a shortcut. So for me, it was just having the same icon everywhere just worked perfectly. Uh, another design that I follow here, he doesn't even have an icon and that works and he has a lot of views for, for that type of information he's producing. So I guess it depends on what you're putting out there. And this is very clean visual thumbnails. And then I want to show you one that like, I don't subscribe to this, but I found this just to kind of show you that I'm like, when I, like, I didn't want that. I didn't want to create these icons with, you know, me like showing, hey, or 
you, whoa, like, you know, like, it's just not me. So you just have to do who you are and whichever way you go with. Remember, you can always redesign them later on and add and change. So no pressure. So if you don't feel comfortable putting your image, just don't. And then eventually, if you do, uh, feel come to the point that you feel like, oh, maybe I should add something more. You can always change that. So um, then another thing, just final thing that I want to talk about um, is basically, you know, what are your goals, right, for the channel? So like a couple of, I have a list here that I want to go like, you, are you trying to increase your brand awareness? Are you trying to produce a portfolio of your work? Uh, maybe you want to find a job eventually. You want to, um, you know, become an industry expert. Maybe you want to become a YouTuber, like a, have so many subscribers, eventually monetize this channel. Um, maybe you want to express yourself, share your information, share knowledge, co you know, grow a community on a specific topic. Um, even document your work. I feel like, you know, for me, some of these reasons are like that. Like I want to share some of the information um, you know, grow my brand. Eventually, my goal is also to produce some online courses on some of these topics. And I want to see what works before I spend time and money to design something that my people might not be interested in. And sometimes, you know, from, from posting this stuff, you'd be surprised how some things, let me just show you, like, some videos, I'm like, I was surprised, okay, they had so many views versus others didn't. And then that helps me find figure out which tools are more uh, more people um, find interesting like in my case like i know that i see that keynote from all my videos actually it's it's pretty popular and then you know i did the same thing for my where's my text channel right there the same thing there were some videos that got 556 views and i was like really impressed and so it's very surprising because like i reviewed tech software and it's just this one that's the most popular and I kind of this um, reviewed the, the other ones in similar way so so it's very interesting um, I feel like the best way to learn is actually doing it and you're actually testing th everything on your side and you can always change it adapt remove delete um, so you have options out there and so um, you know, I just want to encourage you to share, you know, what you're doing, what works for you, and also encourage you to go for it if, if that's something you're considering. And, um, you know, so hopefully we can share this journey. So feel free to share, you know, what link to your channel and how long you've been doing it and maybe any lessons that you want to share with everyone. So um, thanks so much for watching.